Hey guys, this is a post-production pie with srlounge.com. All right guys, we're gonna move on to the effects panel and I've loaded up exercise file 1-2 just for our example file and we're gonna hit Control-7 or Command-7 on a Mac to toggle and expand our effects panel over here on the right. Now, the first of our effects is a post-crop vignetting, which we discussed was a little bit different from lens correction vignetting. Where based on the lens correction vignetting, you're basically just trying to adjust uh, kind of the natural lens vignetting that comes from any lens on a camera. With post crop vignetting, this is all about artistic vignetting. So we're creating kind of heavier vignettes. Now, I previously mentioned that I don't typically create super heavy vignettes on my images. So the vignetting that I do use is actually from the lens corrections menu because it's a more subtle vignetting effect. But since Lightroom 3, Adobe's done some great things to the uh, vignetting effect and making it work a lot better and be a lot nicer. Previously, there was only one type of post crop vignetting, and what it was, the style was actually a paint overlay style, which is still available in, in Lightroom 4 and in Lightroom 3 as well. But basically what paint overlay did was it just created a kind of just a nasty, dingy overlay effect where it just darkened these, uh, it didn't darken the natural colors, it just put a dark overlay over those colors. So you're basically painting black over these edges. And uh, it's a really kind of a nasty look. You pull it in and it just kind of just blackens the edges and adds that painting over that image. So at negative 100, it's going to black while you go over to positive 100 and it's going white basically on the edges. It's kind of a really gross effect, but it's great for illustrating how this tool works. So let's just kind of illustrate the uh, different settings here in this paint overlay mode so you can kind of see it very clearly. And then we'll show you the different styles in a second. So with the midpoint, once again, we're controlling how far in this vignetting effect goes into the image. The more left we go on the midpoint slider, then the more it pulls the midpoint effect into the image, while all the way at the right side, we're only affecting the very most corners of our image. The roundness deals with the actual shape of that vignetting effect. So pulling it to the right makes it more circular, while going to the left and going all the way to the left is actually going to make it more of a square. And we can see that if we pull in this midpoint a little bit more, you can see how it's basically becoming more of a square as we go to the left, and it's becoming more of a circle over to the right. Now you can actually do some pretty cool effects with this if you want to create like a kind of border effect on an image, like a uh, kind of like it's printed on a white border edge by just creating this, uh, moving the roundness all the way to the left so it's rectangular, uh, shifting the midpoint in so that it's all the way on the edge, and then uh, adjusting the feather. And the feather is this kind of graduation from white to gray, uh, or from white to the image uh, over the edge of that effect. So the more left we go, so it'll actually decrease the strength of that feather. And the higher we go to the right, it increases the strength of that feather. So it's basically a more gradual transition when we go to the right. So you can kind of create like a cool print border on your image just by selecting this post crop vignetting, making it rectangular, changing the roundness, and making it so it has no feather. It looks like a strong edge. But to be honest, this is an effect that I never really use. So now that we know exactly how these sliders work in this uh, post crop vignetting, let's hold Alt. We're going to reset it, and I'm going to show you the different options now that we have. When we do use post crop vignetting, typically we're going to stick to color and highlight priority. And what those are going to do now is basically adjust the colors that are already there, similar to how the lens correction vignetting works, as opposed to just dropping a white or black uh, vignette over our image, like the old version of that vignette did, the paint overlay version. So selecting, say, color priority, now if I take the amount down, it's just adjusting basically the strength, it's just adjusting kind of the exposure and the colors of the existing image as opposed to adding black to it. Now with color priority, it's changing that a little more and it's really more focused on the colors than with highlight priority, which is more focused on the highlights. So typically we use color priority unless an image has strong highlights and then we'll use highlight priority because we don't necessarily want the whites and the, and the highlights of the image to be vignetted. So highlight priority will kind of avoid that. So on an image like this, we'd probably stick with color priority, you know, move the amount to whatever we feel is appropriate, move the midpoint so it looks like it's not a strong vignette and then go with that. But once again, with lens corrections, when we do vignette, I like to stick with that, uh, you know, the, just the standard lens vignetting. It's just kind of a more natural effect. It looks a little bit more, uh, the best way to put it just it looks a little bit more natural and more often than not we're actually not vignetting our images we're actually correcting vignetting and just leaving them bright so that they they look like they're consistent they have consistent colors basically from edge to edge but for creative uh, vignetting and everything like that you can go into that effects menu and you have the post crop vignette where you can basically go to town 
All right, guys, now let's go over the grain effects, which are actually really cool. They're really great for creating kind of vintage and film effects in Lightroom. So basically what we have with our grain effects is we have the amount, which is just the total amount of grain that we want to add to our image. We can adjust the size of that grain as well as the roughness of the grain. So let's zoom in. We're going to go in and zoom in on this pretty bird's face. And uh, let's adjust the grain in this image. So we're going to pull it up, and you can see automatically that the amount of grain increases dramatically in the image. So let's pull it up and we're gonna kind of create or show you guys exactly how the size looks. When we pull the size down to the left, it makes the grain more fine. So it's much, much smaller grain as when we go to the right and it becomes more blocky. Basically, the higher you go up on the size, the more detail you're gonna be killing in the image. Notice that when the grain is very fine, we can still see detail in the face versus when we take the size up really high, you're actually killing all the detail in the image or in the face. The roughness deals with the shape of the grain. So if you want a very consistently shaped grain, you go pull roughness all the way down to zero. If you want it kind of more uneven as far as like the, just kind of making it more natural, you pull roughness up and it changes kind of the, the shaping and the roughness of that grain. Now a typical film grain setting that we would use is taking the amount down to like say 30, uh, bring the size down to like maybe 28 and taking the roughness down to around 40 to 50. And this gives us kind of that nice film grain look that we used to have and when we shot film. Not too strong, just a nice subtle effect. So we're going to be using film grain quite a bit, especially when we get to creating our vintage effects in the more artistic uh, and the advanced processing tutorials. But for now guys, let's hold Alt or Option on a Mac. Let's reset the grain as well. Actually, you know what, let's just hold, uh, let's just press Control Shift R or Command Shift R on a Mac to reset the entire image. Uh, I'm going to zoom out by clicking on it. And now let's collapse the effect panel by hitting Control 7 or Command 7 on a Mac. All right, guys, let's go on to the last panel, which is the camera calibration panel.